Hi everyone, it's Victor speaking. And today we will be looking at the Venus ingression into the sign of Sagittarius. So finally, Venus is leaving behind the depressed zone and going into the adventurous Sagittarius. Now, Venus typically does not have actually strength in the sign of Sagittarius, it's actually peregrine, which means it feels like an alien there. But um, I think the reason why it might be very good for us is because actually it's going from detriment into a peregrine sign, which is actually already an improvement, improvement on one hand. And secondly, it will be making a very harmonious uh, connection to its ruler, which is Jupiter. So, and that's good, it's going to be a sextile, so there is going to be some Venusian and Jupiterian uh, emphasis and opportunities in our life. There is only one hard aspect Venus will be making while it's in the sign of Sagittarius, and that's going to be a conjunction to the South Node. So we will be speaking about that towards the second part of the video. So stay tuned. And let's explore Venus in Sagittarius a little bit more. Uh, by the way, if you would like to know more about astrology, then you can go on my website, astrovictor.com, and you can find plenty of courses as well as uh, just single singular webinars on certain topics. And also you can book a reading with myself or Tsweti. And uh, don't forget to sub subscribe to the channel as well. So let's get started. So Venus will be moving into this expensive sign on the 7th of October and will remain there for about four weeks. Now, um, one thing which we do need to clarify straight away is that Venus is ruled by Jupiter this time around. So in order for us to know what Venus in Sagittarius will bring for us, it's actually crucial to look at its ruler. Okay, so the reason why we do that is because it's like a guest host situation. So Venus is not in her home sign, which would be the Taurus and the Libra. So therefore, it's kind of like invited into my house and then you're going to be have, you're going to have to act like the ruler wants, right? Because there is a host all the time. So imagine that you go to this uh, dinner party and then, you know, uh, it might be a good friend of yours. Uh, but there is still a certain rules which needs to be applied. So now the final dispositor of this Venus is going to be actually Saturn. Why is that? Because Venus is ruled by Jupiter in the sign of Aquarius, and Jupiter is the, um, is the guest of Saturn, who is in the sign of Aquarius, and it's in rulership. So we do need to look at these three planets if we want to understand how this Venus plays out in our natal chart, as not in your, sorry, not in your natal chart, in the transit chart. And then you're gonna have to do this uh, final dispository chain also in your natal chart as well, okay? So imagine that your Venus, for instance, is in the sign of Libra, which is ruled by Venus, sorry, Venus is in the sign of uh, uh, Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars, and imagine that your Mars is in the sign of Pisces. So Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and then Jupiter is in Sagittarius. So the final dispositor of this Venus this time around would be then Jupiter, okay? So this is the situation. Now, Ju uh, what is Sagittarius? So Sagittarius is something which represents actually the gods. So imagine that you are actually invited into a regal house which is very beautiful, probably. Venus kind of comes there to even beautify more things. So it's like an interior designer is entering a beautiful house and then what type of arrangements we can make to make it even more beautiful. So from the mythology point of view, this is like Aphrodite getting invited by Zeus for an adventurous party. And maybe it's the party where, you know, we're gonna throw the apple into the crowd and then let people fight. Uh, you know, it depends on the aspects. So Venus always wants beauty, harmony. She's all about um, cleaning, uh, wants to buy jewelries and clothes. And then Jupiter is the host this time around. So imagine Jupiter as someone who is actually providing the goods for her. So Jupiter loves to give. 
Jupiter is very generous. Jupiter wants to actually uh, becoming like very grand, grandioso overall. So Jupiter is in the sign of Aquarius, which is definitely about the collective power, definitely about internet, and uh, something to do with your long-term goals overall, but usually it represents a community. Now, the good news is that both Venus and Jupiter are actually benefits. So meaning that they are uh, good doers and they will be forming this very harmonious relationship, which is a sextile uh, towards the end of the month, by the way. So they want to be working well together this time around. Now, if we look at um, this connection between Sagittarius and Aquarius, both of them are very adventurous. So this Venus is definitely going to be stirring up the pot in the adventure uh, department. It wants to travel, it wants to be going on excursions, it wants, it wants to be uh, visiting museums and all those type of things. It wants to be part of a community. Uh, Sagittarius typically represents foreign countries, so I might want to be going to a foreign country with a, a group of people, Aquarius, to do something fun all together. So Venus is very much about harmonizing her intentions to bring people together by travel, studies, uh, agreements in court cases and all those type of things. So for instance, if you have got a court case going on, this actually, this Jupiter and uh, Venus harmonious aspect can bring uh, settlement in the court case. Or imagine that you want to be finding a very suitable course for yourself. This uh, Jupiter Venus harmonious aspect can actually help you in that department. Okay. Now, you know that Venus loves going on a good shopping spree, right? It is one of those planets which is actually in charge of your spending habits. The other one is actually Moon, but we're not going to be speaking about that today. Right, so Venus loves spending in the sign of Sagittarius. It, it books the holidays straight away. It's going to be buying the most expensive things usually. Of course, if you have, for instance, a Saturn square or an opposition to this uh, Venus, for instance, in your natal chart, then you're going to be looking at your budget overall. Um, so one of my guests is here is that somehow we are going to be prompted to go and spend more money. Maybe it's going to be about trying to kind of restart the economic situation in some countries by, I don't know, giving you a voucher or having a Monday when, uh, I don't know, in restaurants, things are 50% off and all those type of things. So somehow I think this Venus is going to get prompted maybe to book holidays because we're going to give this time around 70% of the tickets and all those type of things. Right, and remember that Jupiter actually can make Venus a very greedy this time around. So, in especially in the sign of Aquarius, it can go to the extremes and then like uh, shopping in box and so forth. Now, Sagittarius Venus, actually Sagittarius is a fire sign. It's a masculine sign. It's the, the temple of uh, Jupiter's uh, masculine qualities. Now, what you should know about uh, Sagittarius is that it's a double bodied sign uh, because uh, he represents the end of the autumn as well as the beginning of winter season. So the first 15 degree of Sagittarius is, tends to be more on the humanitarian side and the last 15 degree is more an animal, animalistic sign. So what does that mean for us? So I'll give you an example. For instance, if you lost your dog and then you erect a chart where the dog is, and if it's uh, the, in the first 15 degree of Sagittarius, maybe it's in a humanitarian territory where people usually go, such as, for instance, with Sagittarius, it could be the church or it could be the university. The last 15 degree of the sign is more about animalistic. So that tends to be a little bit more on the hidden side. So where, for instance, the doggy would be able to hide, right, where usually people don't go. So I think the first 15 degree, uh, while Venus is going to be traveling through, it's going to be about prompt, being prompted to spend money, being prompted to travel, or maybe some of the travel restrictions will be lifted for a short amount of time, or countries will make some type of rearrangement, 
and so forth. The last 15 degree is more like being a little bit in the cave though, and kind of planning things out what the future is holding for us. Remember both Sagittarius and Aquarius are very future orientated. So it's about uh, having a plan for our uh, long-term goals or what we're gonna be doing in the future. Okay, so the last 15 degree of Sagittarius is a little bit more about our own instincts, about uh, our own survivors. Now, other way to explain this is that, remember that um, Sagittarius represents the Cantors, who were half animals and half humans. Right. So it does talk about how to balance out the humanitarian as well as uh, our survival needs. And that pretty much comes from the Sagittarius being a fire sign anyway. Fire signs tend to be looking at their personal motives overall. So this aspect is very much about grandness. Um, something which can actually explode as well while uh, Venus is in the first 15 degree because at the end of the day fire is like a flame and the flame always goes upwards so we want to be climbing the uh, hierarchy ladder for instance and maybe this is going to be talking about for you on a personal level that how can I climb the career ladder? You might wanna be looking at where the Sagittarius house cusp is in your chart. So for instance, in my case, it's going to be the 10th house, right? So it could bring you opportunities in regards to career development. It could be brilliant to launch a new project, but if it's in your um, seventh house, then it might be more on the relationship department. And maybe it's talking about, um, how we can make connections with others. Because at the end of the day, Venus is the planet of uh, love, right? So it's very possible that we meet, for instance, a foreigner uh, who we fell in love with or who we have plenty of fun with. So Sagittarius always brings this very chatty, expensive, freedom-seeking energies into the picture. So definitely we want to be kind of, uh, you know, creating ways for ourselves to promote our freedom. Sagittarius tends to be quite sporty. It's a very versatile sign. It's mutable energy, so it tends to be going with the flow. Now, Venus can become quite opinionated in the sign of Sagittarius, especially when it comes to beauty treatments. So you might be going uh, to a beauty salon and, you know, I don't like my nails. Can you please read on them? redo them. So it can be a little bit of a complaining sign. Okay. Uh, Sagittarius is the sign of exaggeration. So where we can blow things out of the ballpark. So anything around uh, love, beauty and money matters, it can actually get intensified this time around. Venus is the planet of attraction, the way we yeah, attract others right so attracting people who might be cocky or arrogant or typically this larger than life type of people big characteristics but they, they, they are not the most stable one because this is a mutable energy so you might be meeting this person at a party because venus in sagittarius is a little bit of a party anymore or uh, the cockiness comes from the fact that sagittarius is um uh, uh, the preacher, the teacher archetype. So the question is, do we have enough knowledge here or do we have not enough knowledge to be preaching about something? But typically Sagittarius might have got this issue of my way is the highway type of um, uh, energy. Now, Sagittarius is very much about Christianity or the religions overall, your belief system. So this Venus might be telling you it's time to examine uh, your belief systems. And maybe because it's going to be conjuncting South Node, therefore we're going to be starting a nine-month new cycle. Conjunctions is, are always about the start of a new cycle. So in the nine, next nine uh, months, we're going to have to release some of our belief systems around maybe love, around how we earn money, 
and so forth. But Sagittarius is optimistic, so we do need to find the silver lining in everything. Even a bad situation comes around, Sagittarius is able to find something good in it. And Venus definitely will help. Now, of course, what could also happen is that we become way too optimistic and we become a little bit careless about certain topics. And that south node there could be talking about the fact that it's time to actually let go of some of those uh, exaggerated personality in a sense. And sometimes we do need to see the reality as well. Why is that? Because the north node is still in Gemini. So which is talking about that we need to gather our data first before we actually start teaching others or we start talking about certain things and we start formulating an opinion, okay? So um, we might be seeing a lot more news in regards to, of course, uh, religions and spirituality, but overall Venus has got this sweet quality and she likes connecting with people. So it can really bring you together with someone who has got plenty of wisdom, for instance. And then look at again, what type of, uh, uh, house Venus will be transiting in your case because um, that will be somehow a sweet spot in the next four weeks for you. So Sagittarius is typically about movement. So if you have got relationship issues, that's what you experienced uh, in the sign of um, uh, Scorpio, then your relationship can actually move forward. And we're talking about business partnership. We're talking about just friends and family overall, because uh, Jupiter is still in the sign of Aquarius, or maybe a community project, which did not go too well while Venus was in the sign of Scorpio. So now it can start moving forward. Now in Scorpio, Venus was holding on to grudges, right? It was more about uh, being a little bit dis depressed, having some type of um, um, trust issues. This time around, it's not about holding on to uh, things. It's about how we're going to be moving forward. So my recommendation is look at what was going on in the last four weeks in your life while Venus was in the sign of Scorpio. Um, and uh, how can I move forward from that? Because the opportunities will be coming towards you. So this combination is very forward looking. It's thinking about what's next. Where are we going in Venusian topics in your chart? So look at what Venus rules. Does that rule, for instance, your second house? How I am going to be moving my financial situation forward? Does Venus rule your fifth house? How I am finally going to get pregnant? Or shall I take risks? Shall I not take risks? These are going to be uh, emphasized uh, topic. Now, as I said, this Venus won't be making any hard connections to any of the malefic planets. Actually, it's going to be sextiling Saturn at one point, and it's going to be sextiling Mars as well. So overall, this is good news probably we become a lot more inclined towards uh, taking on courses uh, and uh, wanting to travel. And because this Venus actually feels very empowered this time around, the last aspect Venus makes before it leaves the sign of Scorpio is actually a sextile to Pluto. And Pluto loves empowering, right? Pluto actually destroys some of the drama first and then it helps you to build a bigger picture. So of course there were some type of drama or emotional turmoil while Venus was in the sign of Scorpio. But this time around that Pluto said, okay, you know what, enough is enough. We've done enough digging this time around, go into a um, very optimistic territory and start building up on your self-worth. So there is some type of uh, fresh start with this Venus who <clears throat> recently might have found some strength within herself. Now, I also believe that the reason why this Venus is actually good for us this time around, because uh, Venus was the ruler of this new moon and it had a mutual reception with Mars as well. So this time around, the, uh, the reception between Mars and uh, Venus will break. So actually those intense feelings will be kind of released a little bit or we can, re uh, we can have yes this uh, revealing moment. 
And the new moon was very much about uh, planting the final seeds uh, because it, Venus was also on very late degree in the sign of Scorpio. So this time around, whatever we planted, maybe around the 6th of October, the next four weeks, we can actually see some results of that, okay? Now, the first aspect Venus will be making is actually a conjunction to the south node. Um, yes, that might be the hardest one of Venus formation in the upcoming uh, one month. And, uh, you know, wherever south node is, it tends to be bringing, um, it tends to, it, it, it tells you that you need to have a very strong scrutiny, scrutiny going on in that area of life. So this time around, it says that you're gonna have to examine the way you spend money or your relationship overall. Now, the exact conjunction is going to be happening on 10th of October. But as I said, this is a new cycle between them two. So it's going to be talking about the next nine months overall. So now, according to ancient astrology, um, the South node, the North node is kind of like the dragon's territory. And Venus making this conjunction to the South node, which is all about an evacuation point uh, from a body part perspective. Uh, um, South node represents the anus, the uh, procreative um, organs overall. So Venus is a little bit hesitant. It's full of admiration it's full of the feeling that I want to be adventurous but at the beginning I am going to be tapping into a dangerous territory because I'm afraid that I can be eaten up by a dragon so that this conjunction can bring initial nervousness hesitance um, as well around the house topic they are actually in and it tells you to look at whether I should be taking the longer road or I should be taking the shorter one, which might be a very dangerous territory. So there is an element of a risk taking involved here. So it might be asking you to examine a relationship which you have recently engaged in, or it might be talking about dealing with some of the past, the ghosts, when it comes to your romantic territories. Okay, but it could also talk about, uh, for instance, uh, especially in a natal chart, Venus conjunction to South Node, that you bring some type of artistic talent into this incarnation, uh, which might have got discovered at an early age, uh, or you just have got these uh, artistic um, inspirations uh, from, uh, from young, from youth, basically. And um, I think uh, it is all about contributing in some way to help others through your talents as well. And yes, at the beginning of our life, we tend to be suffering quite a lot with Venus conjunction to South Node in the love department. So how I am going to be mo moving away from it? It's about understanding your inner beauty. It's an understanding that everyone is going to go through a heartbreak at one point, but how I will be finding true love for myself. Or was I um, um, self-indulgent in the last one year and this time around or even the last six months when North Node was make, uh, making a conjunction to Venus? And now maybe I have to put a break on it. Because remember, the final dispositor of uh, Venus is actually Saturn, which represents the breaks in the car. Uh, car. Or um, it could actually talk about um, that, you know, I might want to be selling some of my beautiful stuff. Do I need that? Do I need them? Do I not need them? Uh, so something to do with your luxurious items. But overall, I feel this uh, Venus in the sign of uh, Sagittarius is actually very, very great. So I'm kind of excited about it. So thank you everyone for watching me and uh, don't forget to check out uh, the 2022 uh, initial recordings. Uh, I made part one already and I'm going to be posting part two as well very shortly. So see you soon. Bye-bye.